Hi, I'm Hazel, and today we're taking a look at the various cool things coming to WoW in patch 8.3. Patch rollout starts this Tuesday, January 14th, so the wait is almost over. First up, and top of my list, 8.3 is adding a new island expedition doubloon vendor. They hang out right by the original ones, and they'll sell you essentially island loot boxes in exchange for doubloons. Each box is tied to specific mob families of loot, and they contain the transmog, toys, pets, and mounts associated with those families. For example, if you want the Squawks Parrot Mount, you'll want to put your doubloons into the Rotting Mire Salvage due to its connection with pirates. What exactly you find in your box is of course random, but the reported mount drop rates so far have been pretty good. If there's one island expedition mount that's just been taunting you all expansion, things are about to look up for you. Next up, 8.3 is adding Heritage Armor for Goblins and Worgens. To unlock it, you'll need a level 120 of that race that is exalted with that faction. For example, a 120 Worgen exalted with Gilneas. At that point, you can do the new Heritage Armor questline and unlock the set. If you don't have the rep yet, pick up your Gilneas or Bilgewater Tabard and burn through some old dungeon runs to catch up. I hear the Mechanar is highly recommended. A new patch means better gear, and that's also going to be true for catch-up gear. Doing the new assaults will get you Black Empire pieces, which are bind on account and item level 415. Send them to your alts and watch their item level soar. Maybe it'll make you feel better when you're grinding out Azerite essences on them from scratch. If you've jumped on the hype train and pre-ordered Shadowlands, 8.3 is going to have an early gift for you, Allied Race Death Knights. Bolvar got lonely, so he's making friends. Volpera Death Knights, Void Elf Death Knights, Zandalari Troll Death Knights, the world is your oyster. Of course, every good patch has a raid, and this one's a doozy. Nihilotha has 12 bosses, spectacular views, and eyeballs for days, presumably for taking in those views. Normal and Heroic will open a week after patch launch on the 21st, with Mythic and LFR rolling out the week after that. I am doing raid guides again, so stay tuned. Of course, there will be a fresh season of Mythic Plus as well with the brand new Awakened affix. No more emissaries. Instead, alternate reality mini bosses that let you skip trash. There's a bit more to it than that, but they should shake up the preferred routes and keep Mythic Plus fresh for another season. Note that when the patch drops, your Titan Residuum is being reset with the new season. You will log in to zero residuum in your currency tab and then some consolation gold in the mail. If there's anything at all that you want to buy before the patch, do it before the patch. Also, there will be a PvP season with fresh vicious mounts, glad titles, all that good stuff. Next, one of the major features of 8.3 is zone assaults. Nizoth's mad, and he's mad at Oldham and the Vale of Eternal Blossoms in particular. You see an assault up on your map, head out there and do any number of defendy things to fill a progress bar. You'll get a cache with a piece of 445 gear and a healthy dose of currencies. You'll need those. Arguably, the central feature of the patch and the reason that you'll want all that currency is for horrific visions. You will need coalesced visions to get tickets to do them, you'll get corrupted mementos from doing them, and then use the mementos to train research and be better at horrific visions. You'll get new essences from these as well as upgrading your legendary cloak, so it's not a system to skip. They'll scale between 1 and 5 players, so you can do them alone or with your friends. Those entry tickets are limited and you will be really working for them though, so choose your company wisely. Also, don't start one right before an electrical storm or you go into labor or something. The basic gist is you go in and when you either die, run out of sanity, or kill the main boss, you're finished. Sanity will drain over time and getting hit by mechanics will also chunk it. Depending on what you accomplished while inside and whether you activated any hard modes, you'll get more corrupted mementos as well as cosmetics, achievements, that sort of thing. You spend those mementos on Titan Research, which makes you better inside of Horrific Visions. To make things more complicated, there's also mini versions of Horrific Visions that you'll find in open world assault zones. Those don't use your research, they don't cost anything to do, but they are once per day and they do include the sanity mechanic. You don't have to remember any of that, so don't stress too much. The intro quest chain of the patch will walk you step by step through assaults, Horrific Visions, and the rest of it as you unlock your cloak and get your feet under you. Next cool thing, no more titan forging. New sources of gear will not titan forge. They will be an item level and that's the item level that they'll be. Instead, new gear can be corrupted. Corrupted pieces have an extra beneficial effect but also increase your character's corruption total. 
At corruption breakpoints, new negative effects will happen such as random slows, void pools, that sort of thing. Your legendary cloak that you've been working on with horrific visions will give you some corruption resist, allowing you to get more upsides with less downsides. Do more visions, upgrade your cloak, and you'll be able to resist more and wear more corrupted gear safely. The whole corruption system is only here for as long as BFA is, so if you're not feeling it, you can just grab a pint somewhere and wait for Shadowlands. Something cool that you can always count on from a new patch are the mounts. 8.3's got plenty of them, but most importantly, we're getting alpaca mounts. It's happening. There's three colors, including Molly here, who's being added to the drop table of the Voldoon world boss. There's also a host of new battle pets for the pet collectors among you. You'll notice a running theme this time is Void Scarred Everything. The Void got to the beetles, it got to the toads, it got to the cats. I also have to show you Cuddly because you've had a long year and you deserve it. On the topic of pets, 8.3 has a new pet dungeon with Black Rock Depths. Word on the street is that it's a tough one, but if you make it through, you'll see the finale of the Shadowy Figure Mystery. You'll also earn the Shadowy Disguise toy to turn you into one of them. WoW Pet Guides already has strategies listed along with rematch strings, so that's my plan. One of the biggest lasting changes coming in 8.3 is the Auction House revamp. They finally did it. I have a full video on this that I will link, but the gist is that basic buying and selling are much, much cleaner. You can buy partial stacks or multiple stacks in one transaction, so no more pages of single stacks ruining your day. Just type in how many you want, and if you like the price, go for it. There's also a handy little uncollected filter that you can use to search for only pets, mounts, and appearances that you do not have learned yet. That could get expensive. A small but welcome thing coming in 8.3 is more difficulties for Operation Mechagon. The 8 boss mega dungeon is being split into two halves for the sake of heroic as well as mythic plus. If you've never done the dungeon and want to unlock mecha gnomes, this means that you'll be able to queue for heroic and do it that way. Next, 8.3 is not bringing account-wide essences, but what it is bringing is new essences. You'll get some from Horrific Visions, some from Magni's new questline, and at least one from the Nihilotha raid. They all grant corruption resist on top of their effects, so they should be pretty competitive. If you're coming back to the game and you're overwhelmed by farming all of the essences, you might be able to get away with mostly new ones. We're also getting new Azerite levels to earn, along with a third minor slot that you will unlock at level 75. Last, 8.3 is bringing two new playable races to the game with Mechanomes for Alliance and Volpera for the Horde. To get Mechanomes, you'll need to be exalted with the Rustable Resistance and complete the Mechagonian Threat quest achievement. Then you'll need a level 120 Alliance character to do the unlock questline. Unlocking the race gives you the racial mount for the whole faction, so even if you don't plan to play one, it's worth doing the quests. Both races have fun racials, cool heritage armor, and it'll be nice to have more tiny characters running around. If you've never played a short tune, you should try it. You feel as though you're running very quickly. And that's what we're getting in 8.3. If you feel overwhelmed, me too. Just follow the campaign quest line and we'll all figure it out. Happy Patch Week, stop by my stream sometime, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.